My paper is entitled Python Implementation for Brain-Computer Interface Research by Acquiring and Processing the NeuroSky AG Data for Classifying Multiple Voluntary Eye Blinks. First of all, I want to thank for the support offered by Professor Dr. Engineer Ilana Constanza Roshka, who is my PhD coordinator. I am the single author of this paper, but the main ideas were previously discussed with my favorite mentor, Professor Dr. Engineer Marius Cristian Luculescu, who had an essential impact on my academic development. The structure of this presentation is the following. One, introduction. Two, hardware system. Three, a software system, Python implementation. Four, a raw EEG acquisition and EEG training data set generation. Five, artificial neural network space classification of multiple voluntary eye blinks. Six, results. Seven, discussions. And eight, conclusions. Introduction. The brain-computer interface research field has considerably evolved during the last decades by providing efficient means of controlling the assistive devices, communication, sleep, and stress monitoring, especially for people with neuromotor disabilities. PCI is a promising solution by providing an artificial route for replacing the neuronal pathways, connecting the brain matter areas with the peripheral nerves and muscles. The BCI purpose is to allow the translation of the thoughts into commands transmitted to an assistive robotic device. This desire is currently unachievable outside an experimental laboratory due to significantly higher requirements, including the complexity of the real-time neuronal biopotentials processing, the ability of the neuromotor disabled person to perform BCI-related cognitive tasks, to elicit recognizable patterns, and the artificial intelligence techniques necessary to convert the intentions into actions. Therefore, BCI prototypes enabling affordable software and harder solutions to improve the research results are still welcome and expected to overcome the existing issues by providing maximum accuracy, quick response, and rapid information transfer rate. According to scientific literature, implementing the most straightforward BCI system involves controlling an external device by detecting the voluntary eye blinking across the electroencephalographic signal. Moreover, the easiest way to acquire the raw EEG signal for developing versatile BCI applications is to use a portable headset such as NeuroSky MindWave Mobile. The majority of the previous scientific articles focused on calling on the shelf NeuroSky libraries, providing convenient programming methods for achieving simple BCI applications with the expense of technical limitations for accomplishing advanced BCI research instruments. Therefore, several thresholding-based algorithms determined the measurement of the attention and meditation level, and the eye blink strength used as commands in a BCI. Few papers explored the NeuroSky EEG data acquisition and processing by applying different methods based on statistics, wavelet transform, supported vector machines or artificial neural networks. In addition, the investigation of the mentioned methods targeted a specific BCI application, not extendable to a general framework for conducting BCI research by enabling the fundamental phases, e.g. data acquisition, processing, and classification. And thus, it results in the main contribution of this paper by providing simple BCI research automated solutions implemented in Python programming language to enable the NeuroSky EEG data processing, features extraction, training data set generation, and artificial neural networks based classification. Executing these stages resulted in performance assessment of the artificial neural network accuracy for simple, double, and triple voluntary eye blinks detection. Also, it resulted in an EEG data set comprising 3,000 sequences distributed as follows. 1,000 sequences of one eye blink detected, 1,000 sequences of two eye blinks detected, and 1,000 sequences of three eye blinks detected. Each sequence corresponds to the acquisition of 1,024 raw EEG samples and the following seven extracted statistical features. Mean, median, standard deviation, the sum of values, skewness, quartosis coefficient, and root mean square. Unfortunately, the scientific literature reported very few EEG datasets to test the algorithms of voluntary eye blinking detection. The novelty of this paper resulted from customized Python scripts for enabling the acquisition, analysis, and classification of the raw EEG signal detected by the NeuroSky embedded biosensor. Hardware system NeuroSky MindWave mobile headset. 
The BCI application developed in the current research involved raw EEG signal acquisition from the biosensor of the NeuroSky portable headset. The NeuroSky headset has an embedded sensor located to the prefrontal lobe on the forehead at the FP1 position according to the, to the International 1020 EEG system. The NeuroSky is based on the embedded Thingier chip, which enables EEG data acquisition with a sampling rate of 512 hertz and provides several benefits. Software system Python implementation. The current research contributes to the brain computer interface field by implementing customized Python scripts to achieve the following phases. Cerebral biopotentials acquisition, raw EEG graphical displaying, statistical features extraction, EEG dataset generation, and classification of voluntary eye blink, raw EEG signal acquisition, and EEG training dataset generation. NeuroPyte library was updated to run in Python 3. The raw value variable stored each value of the raw EEG signal detected by the embedded NeuroSky biosense. As a drawback, not to the NeuroPy library, it is not easy to get precision regarding waiting time set to two milliseconds between the raw EEG data samples. A healthy subject, girl, 29 years old, participating in the experiment involving 75 sessions of performing one, two, or three voluntary eye blinks. And each session included 40 sequences representing 40 simple, double, or triple voluntary eye blinks. A recurrent time interval set to two seconds introduced by a beep sound determined a sequence of 1,000 24 raw EEG samples. It resulted in a CSV, a CSV file comprising 40 sequences with 1,024 samples, each organized in 40 rows and 1,024 columns representing the raw EEG data. Therefore, the previously mentioned 75 sessions led to obtain 75 CSV files, including the 40 multiplied by 1,024 equals 40,960 raw samples for each of the three classes. It followed the extraction of seven statistical features from the raw EEG data containing 1,024 samples and the generation of the EEG data set necessary to classify the multiple voluntary hybrids. The extracted statistical features were mean, median, standard deviation, root mean square, the sum of values, QNES, and quartosis coefficient. Thus, a single data EEG data set consisted of eight columns, seven for features and one for class and 40 rows, 40 sequences of two seconds each for recording 1,024 EEG samples. 75 CSV files represented the 75 EEG data sets to classify the multiple voluntary eye blinks, 25 with simple eye blinks, 25 with double eye blinks, and 25 with triple eye blinks. Concatenating all the, the 75 EEG datasets resulted in a single EEG dataset comprising 75 multiplied by 40 equals 3,000 sequences of eye blinks. Then the resulted CSV file consisted of 3,000 rows and eight columns necessary to train an artificial neural network to classify the multiple voluntary eye blinks. Artificial neural networks based classification of multiple voluntary eye blinks. Another contribution of the current research is implementing a customized Python script to employ the artificial neural network for multiple voluntary eye classification. The following Python libraries included the necessary specific functions, NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, Piera Suite TensorFlow, Deep Learning Framework, and Psyche. Further, it followed the EEG dataset splitting into a training subset and a testing subset. Thus, the testing subset constituted 20% of the entire EEG dataset, resulting in 600 out of the 3,000 samples for testing purpose. An essential stage consisted in creating the artificial neural network composed of four layers. The structure of the first and second hidden layers was the following. Number of neurons equals to 1,400, the uniform distribution used to initialize the weights, and the activation function equals to a rectifier linear unit. The input layer had seven neurons corresponding to the previously mentioned seven statistical features. The output layer had three neurons corresponding to the three classes regarding recognizing a simple double and triple voluntary eye blinks. Compiling the, the artificial neural network involved setting the following parameters. 
optimizer is SGD or stochastic gradient descent, loss function is categorical cross entropy, and matrix is accuracy. The SGD convex function is used as optimizer to determine the suitable set of weights by identifying a local minimum of the input function. Thus, it is necessary to set the learning rate to an appropriate value, 0 0.00001. A momentum equals to 0 0.99 was also set to increase the speed of the optimization process. The following critical stage consisted in the fitting of the compiled artificial neural network to the generated EEG dataset. The artificial neural network was, was trained on 1,920 samples and validated on 480 samples. A sample is each of the 40 sequences or rows representing the measured values of the seven statistical features from each of the 75 EEG data sets. As mentioned previously, 20% representing 600 samples of the entire EEG data set containing 3,000 samples were necessary for testing per. It remained 2,400 samples aimed for training and validation per. 20% of the 2,400 samples or 480 EEG data sequences were necessary for validation purpose. Then, considering the hyperparameters, batch size equals to 2 and epochs, epochs equals 2,000 and the rest of 1,920 rows of training data, there were 960 batches with two samples each and 2,000 passes through the whole EEG data set. Finally, the, the, the artificial neural network model made predictions on the testing data composed of 600 samples. Also, they resulted in loss and accuracy specific to the testing process necessary to evaluate the performance of the artificial neural network model. Also, the confusion matrix showed detailed results regarding the correctly and incorrectly detected samples from each of the three output classes, simple, double, and triple voluntary hybrid. Results. The proposed artificial neural networks based architecture aimed for multiple voluntary eyeblings classification reported the results shown in this table. A video demonstration of the Python based implementation for voluntary eyeblings classification is available at these two YouTube unlisted links. Discussions. Although the obtained results reported high values of accuracy for training, validation, and testing the compiled Python based artificial neural network, further experiments are necessary to analyze possible particularities implied by a large number of individuals taking into account their age, gender, stress level, degree of disability, or the ability to focus on accomplishing the required task to evaluate, to ex execute simple, double, or triple eyeblings. The customized artificial neural network-based architecture aims to classify eyeblings characterized by average M. The artificial neural network may need improvements to differentiate between voluntary eyeblings of various strengths depending on the effort of the eyeball mass. Otherwise, the presented Python automated scripts aims to offer a general purpose BCI research instrument as long as the conducted instruments involve the following three fundamental states raw EEG data acquisition, processing enabled by features extraction, and artificial neural network space classification. Still, the proposed Python implementation aims to enable the thin gear based chip of the most affordable and portable EEG commercial headset, the NeuroSky MindWave Mobile. In addition, the presented Python software tool provides its usefulness for any application that involves the assessment of the previously mentioned seven statistical features. Conclusions. This paper presents a Python based implementation of a simple BCI related research instrument necessary to acquire, process, and classify the raw EEG signal detected by the embedded sensor of the NeuroSky headset. A customized artificial neural networks-based architecture classifies the multiple voluntary eyeblings used, to con used as control signals in a straightforward brain-computer interface application. It resulted in the generation of a training data set containing 3,000 recordings evenly distributed for detecting simple, double, and triple voluntary eyeblings. It also involved extracting seven statistical features from the raw EEG signal. The proposed Python application provides simplicity and efficiency to help researchers explore and experiment with the working principle underlying the BCI scientific field. Future research directions should update the artificial 
neural network framework to classify voluntary IBs of various strengths, mild, regular, or firm. Also, the Python-based artificial neural network should differentiate between spontaneous, reflexive, and voluntary IBs. Moreover, the BCI instrument requires improvements to detect wings precisely. Extracting additional statistical features will extend the universality of the experiments conducted with the proposed BCI software solution. The ultimate goal is to achieve a real-time running of the Python-based voluntary eyeblings classification. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Luciano. Dear colleagues, do you have some questions or comments? Could I ask something? Uh, Michael Shishkin, Polytechnical Institute, Ukraine, Kharkiv. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yes, of course. So uh, my question is, what uh, value of delay between uh, obtaining some uh, signals like ETG or something else uh, and uh, uh, results and reaction for it in hardware uh, me mechanism it so what value of delay okay so the delay between uh, each eg samples uh, is equal to two milliseconds and uh, this way uh, it results a time interval of one second and during this time interval will it will result of 512 uh, samples. Depending on the performance of the computer, for Windows-based uh, operating system, it is possible not to achieve the two milliseconds uh, time interval. Then the most uh, frequent time interval is 10 milliseconds between EEG samples. And then it will result 100 EEG samples during one second. Uh... I see. Uh, so, uh, if you uh, could prognose uh, some hardware implementation for uh, uh, for for uh, control any moving any 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 uh, any uh, hardware devices, uh, so between uh, obtaining uh, the signals and reaction, you have uh, not in in real time it's it's not yeah. about not real time yeah, yeah i i understood uh previously i developed some level application and um, at that time the time response was most in instantaneous uh in parallel with the acquisition processing and classification of the signal uh, it will result to the execution of uh, the action uh, here on Python, it's uh, quite uh, difficult to obtain um, this uh, quick time response. It may be between 500 milliseconds and one sec. Uh, it is uh, under progress, such an application. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I? Thank you. Professor, do you have any? Other questions? Well, may I ask a question? Please. Uh, I am Victoria Pescorte from uh, the local uh, University of Medicine and Pharmacy in Kishina, Moldova, Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care. And uh, I'm a little bit familiar with the field because I'm uh, performing. Uh, in a way, similar research. And first of all, I would like to uh, thank Juana for a quite interesting presentation. I was uh, attending the yesterday presentation too. And uh, uh, I, I can say as a comment that in my opinion is quite ingenious uh, using uh, this uh, not costly parts for solving such an important task first. Second, uh, I uh, have understand your concern uh, when you uh, mentioned that it's quite difficult to find uh, available uh, data uh, without uh, uh, eye blinking because usually the eye blinking is considered uh, in EEG analysis an artifact and uh, need, needs to be removed uh, and uh, but in your case uh, is, is a, a, an oppositely different situation and uh, a question uh, 
you, uh, um, as, as, as far as I, I got it, uh, you uh, uh, are using uh, the a multi layer uh, perceptron. Uh, and uh, um, I have seen uh, quite quite uh, high uh, accuracy and other metrics uh, speaking about the um, effectiveness of, of this method. But uh, can you tell me uh, uh, about um, overfitting? Uh, was uh, it a problem? Uh, because uh, usually it's a problem with a multi layer uh, perceptron. Uh the, the accuracy that I obtained was uh, ninety two percent for both uh, validation and the training or fitting uh, process. Currently, for this test, uh, I I didn't uh, encounter any issues. It was a quite a simple application for an experimental um, a prototype. And one more question, thank you. Uh, uh... How about using a recurrent neural network? Uh, some uh, researchers uh, are presenting as more suitable for this type of uh, signal. Uh, have you ever tried a recurrent uh, neural network or not? No, no, uh, no. I'm, just I, I'm still in the beginning uh, stage. No. Uh... I Not yet. Know. We shall continue the research because uh, Wana will finish his thesis. Uh, her thesis. So, uh, at the end of our research, uh, maybe she will uh, uh, do this thing also. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you for uh, suggesting us. Of course. <laughs> very interesting. Thank very you. interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much.